welcome to the No Limits Podcast with your host, E. Willie. Welcome to my show, Greg. Awesome. Thank you for having me. Glad to be here. We're going to talk about one of my favorite things that I haven't got a chance to really talk about on this show yet. Maybe a little bit with Jimmy Riffle. Uh, we got into turtles, but turtles are one of my long life passions. I've loved them since I was a little kid. Insert the little kid. I like turtles. Face paint job. What do you think? I like turtles. All right. You're great zombie. Um, turtles are awesome. I came across your YouTube channel, I think maybe four or five months ago. And I was like, holy crap, this dude is awesome. This is my new friend. You have like, you do all the cool stuff that I like to go do. You go to Herpin and you find the coolest stuff. You have an incredible collection of stuff that you, you in your own personal collection. But your channel is awesome, man. I really enjoy it. My kids love it too, which is fun. Awesome. They're Appreciate cool. it, man. I'm, I'm glad you guys enjoy it. Yeah, it makes them like turtles, and they think it's cool that Daddy likes turtles now because Greg likes turtles. <laughs> <laughs> if I can reach even one of them, that's that's good in my book. What got you into turtles, man? You've been into it since a kid, too. Yeah, yeah. I I think um, my dad was really into them when he was a kid, and he had box turtles, and um, he kind of when I was I remember being super young, and we would drive around looking for turtles crossing the road, and we would help them out. And then when I moved to Florida. The part of Florida that we were in, they were still kind of building it. And so there was still a lot, kind of a lot of wilderness. And I was really fortunate to live in that time in the late 80s and early 90s. And there wasn't a lot of other kids to play with, but there were turtles everywhere. And I just thought it was the coolest thing. And it was like, I was either doing one of two things. I was either skateboarding or I was looking for turtles and reptiles. And I would just head out with like a backpack and a field guide and, you know, see <laughs> if I could start checking a list. And that, was, that just kind of started the whole thing. You had the whole Peterson field guide? I had Peterson. I had Autobahn. The Peterson one was better because it was more detailed, but it always fell apart. Uh, those ones yeah. that they had in the 80s and 90s were crappy, <laughs> man. They just, they, I don't know what they were using for glue, but they were terrible. Yeah, I think the budget was pretty low. Yeah, I did the exact same stuff, man. That's awesome that you got to do that in Florida. That's an area that I've never really got a chance to herp yet, but I really want to go do that i grew up going to florida like every summer basically we'd go to navarra beach uh pensacola area or destin but um never really got a chance to go out and do what i wanted to do with that so i know there's a lot of good species out there there is and you know like where i grew up in florida like again it was i mean they had just barely started developing so there were still indigo wow. snakes and gopher tortoises and eastern diamondbacks and i mean all the stuff that's rare now or it was common. I mean, you could go out every morning at 6 a.m. sunrise. You see two or three indigos in the road and gopher tortoises <laughs> walking around, Florida box turtles everywhere. Okay. And it's it's funny because you tell somebody that now and they think you're like making it up, but it, it literally was like that. And I went back there last year with uh, my in-laws and that none of it's left. I mean, it's, it's all developed. So all of that's gone. So is that what ran the species out is just overdevelopment of people? Yeah, yeah. They just uh, ran out of yeah, just ran out of places to live. And, you know, maybe they'd build a house here and they'd move over and build a house here. But eventually they just didn't have anywhere to go. And, you know, probably a lot of them get run over or, you know, whatever, you know, kind of negative stuff comes with that. Yeah. Uh, in your time in Florida, did you ever come across a scarlet king snake? I did. Yeah, those were really common. So, like, really? it's Damn. funny because where I live in Georgia now, they're really common in a different habitat. So where I used to find them in Florida was where, pine trees met the water and where like if a pine tree fell over they would be underneath that or around that and then here they're on these like hillsides where like pine trees meet like open kind of grassy areas and where they do like controlled burns you can go and look under bark and there's like scarlet kings there so wow. it, it's cool that to have like something that i found as a kid and be able to find it here in a totally different habitat yeah that's crazy that would be exciting as hell for me to come across that. Uh, my buddies, I was talking to Jimmy Riffle about this too, that uh, I have a friend that is pretty good at finding coral snakes in Louisiana, where we're from, but I could never find one, man. I spent so many hours looking for coral snakes and I could never come across one. And I moved away to uh, North Dakota for work. And that winter or that, that fall, he came across so many timbers and corals. I was like, dude, I'm going to punch you. You find all this when I leave. <laughs> He's so good at finding crap. No, 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 he drives me. We down. used to, we used to find corals. Um, if it was like really like blistering hot the day before, and uh -huh. then it rained at night, 
there would be corals out in the road the next morning, like, but like sunrise the next morning. So in Florida. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. They're, they're, they're up here, but they're really rare up here. I think Noah is the only guy that's really documented them well up here. Yeah. What state are you actually in? I'm not even sure. I'm in, I'm in Georgia. Oh, okay. Georgia. Oh, that's a beautiful state. Yeah. There's a lot of pretty terrain out there. Yeah. And it's hot too, huh? Hot. Like uh, it can be. It's, it's not hot right now. It's in the twenties right now. So yeah, it's, here too. I'm in Colorado. It's, it's pretty cold right now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's pretty rough. Cause um, right now I have a lot of my stuff. I had to grab some things and bring them inside and you know, they're not real stoked about being in tubs for a few days, but you know, you yeah. do what you got to do. Absolutely. All right. I got so excited about talking reptiles. I forgot to jump into the six questions. We'll do that. And then we'll go back to reptile talk. Okay. All right. Number one, what movie can you watch over and over without ever getting tired of? Uh, probably Empire Strikes Back mm. or Dumb and Dumber. Oh man. Yeah. One of those two. <laughs> Likewise. So uh, every time somebody brings up Star Wars, I have to go on a nerd tangent. Um, do you, are you watching the Mandalorian? Yeah. Yeah. We, so I don't have Disney plus, so we may or may not be watching it off of a Thai website. Right. So, <laughs> but no, I'm, I'm watching it. It's, it's good, man. I, I love it. I love it. And uh, I, or may not have it, watched the Tyson Jones fight uh, through some illegal streaming too. I don't know. There's no proof. <laughs> yeah. I, I, w I wish I would have found a place to watch that one. I had to watch just like the thing where the guy blogs the updates. Uh, so I had to read, I had to read about it as it was happening. So that was kind of, Kind of yeah, interesting. Old school. <laughs> yeah. And here's a left. He hits him with a right. <laughs> exactly. But <laughs> yes. Um, so impressive with that fight. Yeah. Yeah. He was, I mean, I, I think if anybody followed anything he had been up to, I think we all kind of knew where that was headed. I mean, not that, you know, Roy Jones Jr. Isn't amazing because he was, I mean, was, we both grew up, you know, watching both of those guys fight, but mm -hmm. um, I feel like Tyson's one of those guys, like there's certain people that like once, they're on a mission, you know, you're not stopping that train. Yeah. He's a different and, breed for sure. That guy is yeah. incredible. He scared me as a kid and he still scares me as an adult. <laughs> old enough to be my dad probably. <laughs> exactly. Freaking crazy, man. Um, so yeah, back to the Mandalorian. What's your opinion on the Mandalorian? Are you enjoying it? I like it. I mean, I, I like that um, more than the most recent movies. And I like it as much as I think I like the original trilogy, I I'm a big fan of spaghetti Westerns Me too. and the fact that it's shot with that style and a lot of that influence. And the fact that John Favreau is, a, is a nerd of star Wars. And mm -hmm. it seems like he really cares a lot about it and about making it to where like anybody that's a fan, even like somebody that's like a deep, deep fan and watches, you know, the, the, the other cartoon versions and reads the books and all that stuff. He's, he's bringing in elements from all of that. I, I love it. And I like that it doesn't necessarily have to keep revolving around the same characters. He's, he's brought in this new character and this new character goes on these like weekly adventures. And it, it reminds me of those shows in the like 60s, 70s yeah. and 80s where your main character went on adventures every time, but now he's going on these adventures that keep expanding the star Wars universe. So for me, it's, I mean, I, for me as a nerd, I just sit there like, you know, like Homer when he sees donuts. I'm like, oh, you know, like, I yeah, love it. There. Yeah, it's fun. My, my brother and I, he's older than I am, and he grew up when the Star Wars movies actually came out and got to see him in the theater. Um, so he's like really cool for him. But it's nice that we get to talk about something ongoing with Star Wars every week when the new episode comes out. We get to have our little nerd conversation. It's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, are you all caught up? Are you on the, the latest episode? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So the last episode was the one with Ahsoka, um, mm -hmm. and then I guess a new one comes out on Disney yeah. Plus tomorrow. Yeah. Um, so I probably won't. I probably won't see it for you know, probably a few more days after that. But um, I'm excited, and uh, I, like I said, it. I mean, we don't even know like week to week what exactly is going to happen. So I, I like yeah. that 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 actually is uh, keeps you on your seat. Yeah, for sure. I feel the same way. And you mentioned uh, spaghetti westerns. I'm actually in the middle. Well further in the middle i'm really deep into writing a western right now that i'm trying okay. to get the, the book out early next year and then hopefully i can sell the screenplay eventually but uh yeah early plug for my book <laughs> there you go that's awesome dude i'm a huge sergio leone fan and um i was actually so i i shoot photo and video of weddings 
And uh, mm-hmm. I had a couple I had a couple weddings I did this summer where I'd been watching like way too much spaghetti westerns in my uh, quarantine downtime. Uh-huh. And I, I I had one that I did at a vineyard and it's a huge wide open area. And I remember I shot the whole thing like a spaghetti western. And um, it was really funny because I shot it and then somebody else edited it and they totally didn't get what I was going for. I mean, it all, it all looks fine. It's just funny to me when I, when I watched their edit, I was like, Oh no, they missed the the opportunity to take yeah. this to this, to this, you know, yeah. the way that they start with these wides go to mediums and then these ultra tights. And I just was, I don't know. It's, I I've always nerded out on those movies and I, I've always liked that style of shooting. And so, yeah, like if I shoot somebody's wedding, there's a chance I'm going to bring some of that to it. That's cool. My wife is a photographer too. She does that for her living. Um, yeah, we've got a lot to talk about. Damn. All right. Uh, number two, what's the best practical joke that you've played on someone or that has been played on you? Um, I, I would say the, the best one that was played on me might've been my mom one time. I think she like, she called me up and she said the house was on fire and I was like, what? And I was like, are you sure? And she's like, no, I'm just kidding. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah that was that was pretty funny and then practical joke i've played on somebody else i mean i've i've done a lot of practical jokes and probably the stuff that be considered mean um those are the best yeah i'm i can't think of one off the top of my head but there's been so many over the years like usually on skate trips that's when you do like the worst the worst stuff to somebody um i think uh oh i remember um these chicks wouldn't leave our hotel room one night and they were really annoying so um i don't i don't know if you've ever been involved with skateboarding or known anybody in skateboarding but um um i'm casual friends with wee man jason akuna okay there was this dude frank gerber and he was um for whatever reason he was hanging out with us in our room these girls wouldn't leave and we kept asking them to leave and they wouldn't leave. And, um, the, the crew of guys I was with, we weren't really like drinking and smoking stuff and all that stuff. I was straight edge at the time. So the dudes I was with, we were trying to get sleep for the contest the next day. This was when they do the Tampa Am contest. So these girls wouldn't leave. They just kept making noise all night. So this dude, Frank Gerwer was like, I'll help you out. And he like went and got their clothes and he's like, hold those clothes up. So I'm like holding their clothes. Like, What's he going to do? And he starts just like, pissing all over their clothes <laughs> yeah they brought these girls brought like extra clothes because they went swimming in the pool and like damn so he like pissed all over their clothes and then went and put them back in their little like bag they had with them. and then i i just remember i passed out and then the next morning the girl was like banging on the door yelling at us for for peeing on their clothes and i, I was like i didn't do it it wasn't mine but that that's just like that's the kind of stuff i think that you know being a skateboarder you, you do a lot of that stuff and i mean other than that i i try to scare my wife every chance i get Same. i try to um teach her like things in english that aren't actually proper she's from thailand so like oh, really? i remember like yeah some of the first things i taught her in english were really messed up things to teach people <laughs> that's fun yeah. how'd you meet her you met her on a trip mm, just starbucks she's in oh, line really? behind me and i was just like hey cute girl like i'll buy your drink so uh, that was pretty much how that went. So, cool. but, are you still skateboarding? Yes. Yeah, I skated uh, yesterday and then went to the chiropractor today. So today was an off day, and then I'll go <laughs> skate tomorrow. Yeah, you gotta break yourself and repair. Huh? Yeah, yeah. When you're 40, you don't really bounce back as well. So. Are you 40? I'll be 40 in February. Oh wow, well, you got a couple years on me. I thought we were about the same age, middle 30s. I'm 36. Uh, I'll, dude, I'll take 36 back. Yeah. Give me, give right. me that one. You're 36. <laughs> Number three, if you could time travel one time there and back, which time period would you choose? So does that mean in my lifetime or does that mean in any time? In any time, your lifetime or any other time? Um, I would say if it was in my lifetime, just back to that time when I was a kid and catching animals and stuff like that. Uh, if it's in any time, um. I probably would have liked to have seen like America before it was fully settled and when it was like still super wild and, you know, before there was an old Navy and on every corner. 
Wow, I never thought about that. That would be cool for the herping side of it too. Like it'd be so strange yeah. to come across. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I'd like to see, you know, America when there was bison all the way across and yeah. you know, like stuff the way it, it was meant to be. Yeah, that's that would be really cool. That, that opened up a whole new world. And I mean, thought about like early America where all the, the herps would be at naturally and how many were there. Exactly. That'd be cool. Um, number four, what is something that really irritates you? What's your weird pet peeves? Um, I think when I um, started working in like television and in the entertainment business, you had to be on time. If you weren't five minutes early, then you were five minutes late. So if, some, if, if I'm on time and somebody's late, that like is, you know, it, it's just like kind of a natural like thing or it like kind of irritates me. Yeah. But, but I, as I've gotten older, I've realized that just not everybody's wired that way. Yeah. Yeah, if my wife and I are supposed to go somewhere, we're notoriously going to be late. We're bad for that. We blame each yeah. other, so nobody really knows <laughs> who's the fault. Yeah, as long as you can blame each other. Yeah. We use and each other as scapegoats. That guy. <laughs> yeah, it's her fault, man. You know how she is. Um, do you have kids yet? No, I don't. Okay. Number five, what is an item in your home that is special to you for sentimental reasons? Um... Probably, I don't know. I don't really have like a lot of objects that are sentimental. I have like, I have like a couple video cameras that I had like all through the 2000s, like making skate videos and with my friends and going on trips. And I have like one of them actually sitting next to me that like has, has been through like so much and been a part of so many videos. And I just kind of keep it next to me. It's a little Sony VX 1000 and, um, mm -hmm this camera was like the one that made all the skate videos and stuff for, yeah, for decades. Funny. And they, they still use it to this day. So I, I keep that one. I just keep it there as like a memento. And I, I told I, like, it doesn't work anymore. And um, I just keep it there. Like, you know, just on a shelf is like little, little thing to look at and have memories. So. Yeah. That one's perfect. That's a good item. Number six, what accomplishment are you most proud of? Last question. Ah. I don't know. I don't really like sit and think about stuff like that, but, um, that's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> what, um, I would say I'm most proud of, and I don't know if I would say proud, but I would, I'm most appreciative of the people I've met and the friends I've made over the course of, you know, my short little window being alive on earth. You know, I got to not only meet people that I looked up to as a kid, but now we're friends and, I, I, I have a tendency to be able to make friends with people that I, that I really respect and um, that we end up, you know, being very cordial and friendly with each other and that I'm able to always, I, I always try to always um, take in new information. I, I don't ever assume that I know everything. So. Yeah. That's but, a problem in the animal hobby for sure. There's a lot of know-it-alls. It's one of the. Yeah. Times. Yeah. Go to any reptile show. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah. Those are. Yeah. For sure. Um, is there any other skateboarders out there that are big in the reptiles too? Um, yeah, like there, I mean, there, there's, 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 there's quite a few. Um, there, like, I know that like this guy, Brandon Beeble, he has like Russian tortoises, um, Bucky Lassick, uh, he rode for Tony Hawk's company birdhouse and he has a, a big tortoise collection. Really? Um, my buddy, Dane Berman from Australia, he's really into reptiles. I think he has, He's living in California right now. So I think he has like some chameleons and stuff. And then when he's in Australia, I think he has like some blue tongue skinks and he actually goes herping when he's back in Australia. And, oh, you know, cool. Australian herping is like a whole different ball game. So have you done so that yeah, they're, they're, I have not, I, I really want to go to Australia really bad. Um, yeah, me too. But I, I, I got to wait for the world to straighten out first. Yeah. It's, it's pretty, um, we have a podcasting friend from our other podcast that's out there. She's in uh, Melbourne, Victoria area, and it's pretty strict there. It's a uh, heavy lockdown, but mm -hmm. when it does get back to normal. Yeah, that, that's the – that and Costa Rica are two areas I would absolutely love to go. Have you I would love Costa to do Rica? Costa Rica as well. I, I have not – I have, like, friends that do it, like, every year because it's, yeah. like, not far Thanks. at all. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely down. I'm going to do that at some point. I also want to do Belize. And then um, I figured Australia, I could go to Thailand – 
and then go from there to Indonesia and Indonesia, Australia, because I want to go to Indonesia as well. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah, it's another big one. Is your uh, your wife, is she from Thailand? Or yeah, just yeah. She, she grew up there. She grew oh, okay. up there. Um, and um, her her parents are there. Her parents were here last year for three months. And then in la- at the end of last February, we flew to Thailand to take them back. And then um, we stayed there for the month. But that was also the month everything kind of went to crap. Yeah. And uh, we were at one point, I didn't know if I was even going to make it back. And it, it was funny because I was like, I was like, I got to get back. I got work. I was like, I'll be working when I get back. And then like, I got back and all my work was gone. <laughs> I was like, well, wow. I could have just stayed there. Yeah. Damn. And it, you know, they have like almost no, like where, where we were staying with her family. I mean, they don't, they haven't had any cases there in like six months. Wow. So like it's it, over there. It's like way safer um, than it is here. And it's, so it's a little, it's a little frustrating, but, you know everybody's got to deal with it so yeah for sure <clears throat> how does your wife feel about reptiles is similar passion or she just tolerates it mm, yeah she's more like indifferent to it she just kind of i don't want to say she allows it because when she met me i had like reticulated pythons i mean i had a whole menagerie of stuff close the gap. yes <laughs> yeah yeah so i mean as long as there's less snakes she's pretty much cool with it um, she's got her area in the yard where, you know, we do a garden and all that stuff and she's good with that. And, um, that, that works out pretty well. And, and I mean, there's a couple of the tortoises that she, you know, likes and she'll say hi to and stuff. I mean, one of them will actually follow her around the yard. Really? That's so, cool. Yeah. That's good stuff. Um, you have a blind alligator snapping turtle, a female, right? I do. I do. And that one is for educational stuff you use her for? Or, yeah. So or all my, all allig- yeah, all my, all, all my alligator snapping turtles, anything that's native to my state that's uh-huh. protected, they're all like working animals. So they're all for education and in some capacity, that particular turtle. Um, I, I had had a guy that found my YouTube channel and he's like a deer hunter and he had found her when he was out on like a plot of land where he would go along a Creek and she's just sitting in shallow water, not moving. And he had filmed it and then let it go but notice it wasn't moving and then he had messaged me and I came down like a week later looked at it and then I was like well let's move it to some deeper water and see if this is what it needs it and then didn't know at that time that it was blind and let it go and then like a week later he's like hey man it's back in the same spot again it hasn't moved the you know the landowner is talking about they might want to eat it and I was like well if it hasn't moved in two weeks I'll come back down again Two weeks later, still hadn't moved, and he was really concerned that somebody might try to eat it. So I called my state DNR, let them know the situation. You know, they 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 knew who I was, and they knew that I'm not, you know, about selling turtles or anything like that. Right. They were like, "Look, just just go get it, you know, bring it back, you know, as long as it's safe." You know, that was kind of what mattered. And so then when I went down there to get it, I was like, "This thing's not reacting to like, you know, like the, there's a way they usually react to stuff." And she wasn't reacting. And I, I saw like, there's no pupil in both eyes. It's just like where the pupil is, it was just a hole into the eye. Damn. So I, I, I'm thinking it's congenital. Like she'd hatched out with just no pupils and just lived a blind, long blind life. And um, so I brought her back and um, I've done some uh, educational stuff with her uh, a couple times. And then I have some other ones and I try to rotate them out. I have a couple of them that are pretty used to the drill. So I, I have, I have a couple others that I, I tend to bring before her, but what's cool about her is she doesn't react defensively at all. Cause she can't see anything. So she's not likely to try and bite anything or act, yeah. act defensive. So that that's kind of cool. She's just real old now. So I, I try to like handle her like as, as little as possible. So now it's more like if people come over to my house, I'll show, I'll show her to them. But, um, I just like the last couple of times I took her out, I was just kind of noticed she was more geriatric also. And I didn't really want to cart her around too much. Man, that's so incredible that she could even live that long being an alligator snapper. I could see like a common doing well being blind because they're just such good scavengers. And, but an alligator snapper doing most of their trapping is like hunting the way they hunt. Yeah. That's impressive that she, she made it and she kept going like that. 
Yeah. And it was funny because the first week that I had her, I, I, I put her in a tub so that I could see like what she passed out of her digestive system uh-huh. over the first week. I mean, it was all just little random stuff. I mean, there was just like little bits of like a clam, a snail, uh, some bugs, some plants, um, just, just whatever. She, her way through, huh? Yeah. She just made a living kind of scavenging the bottom and did it, done it for a long time. That's awesome. That's by far my favorite animal on the planet. I've always loved alligator snapping turtles. I have yeah, uh, too. two right now. I had two that I had in Louisiana, a pair that I named uh, Lewis and Anna after Louisiana. And um, mm-hmm. I had to separate with them when I took a job in North Dakota. Um, but I have two right now and I just freaking uh, lost the baby the other day, man. It's a heartbreaking situation. Uh, it was one of the ones from John Richards farm this mm-hmm. past hatch. I had a freak accident happen with uh, my baby hatchling snapper. Got her tail sucked into the filter, like where it it just kind of yeah. her and she drowned underwater. Man, I, I that can't sucks. express to you how bad that sucked, man. I was yeah I had, that 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 turtle was gonna be um in the the will for my children to take care of. Man. <laughs> I had plans. Yeah, that's that. that was a bummer. yeah. I, I I'm always telling guys like. You know, they're when they're little, like when they're fresh, that first mm-hmm. year of their life, man, they're helpless and dumb. Yeah. Like you really got to kind of, kind of nerf, nerf their life a little bit because they'll, yeah. they'll get, they'll get it. They'll try to like get underneath something like they normally do. And they'll just put themselves under something and not be able to get back out. Yeah. And then kind of lodge themselves in and get and drown. Yeah. yeah. That sucks, man. I, I, I need to contact John if he has any more to get another one. But um, yeah, that, that was a bummer. My other one is probably around a 10 to 11 inch carapace. Um, it's got okay. a big snub tail. I'd say probably half the tail is missing. It must have got bitten off when it was a juvenile or something. I uh, I got that one from a guy in Denver that was getting rid of it. Okay. But um, yeah. Poor little baby, man. I, I hate killing reptiles. That su- sucks. Yeah. Hopefully, John still has some left. I mean, I think he usually does. Yeah. Um, I would think with this year, he probably does have like probably a good amount left i yeah. i wanted to reach out to him and get one as well just to raise a little baby and, and kind of document it but yeah. i never did you have a um a hybrid right now too don't you a common yeah i get across that's so crazy I, yeah i knew that that was even a, an option a possibility in nature yeah i never really knew reason. about it until a few years ago and then um it started getting more more and more um common to see so to speak i remember um i was talking to a guy in Florida a few years ago and he had a bunch of what he was selling at the time were common snappers. And then somebody had messaged him and said something was weird with it. And he had bought, he had bought all of these from like a zoo or something like their surplus from like, you know, parent turtle. And he went back and looked at him and realized that he was selling hybrids. And then this guy, I think the guy's name was like Brian ended up buying all of them. And then that guy over the last few years would sell like one a year. And I think that guy might still have a couple of those original ones left from that zoo where the, it happened naturally. So is there any adults out there right now that people know about that are hybrids? Not in the U S not in the U S as far as I know. I, yeah. I think they're all in Asia. And I mean, there's a few guys in Asia that have them probably 12, 13 inch. I haven't seen any that look like they're, full-blown adults so i don't think we know exactly how big they're gonna get and yeah what they're really gonna look like do you know if it has the little worm appendage in the mouth so my buddy my buddy fred has some and we were looking at some of his on my last trip down there and we're looking at the mouth of them and they're all different so like the biggest one he has where you would be able to see the inside of the mouth the best i got a picture of it and it has a little bit of extra like kind of flesh mm-hmm. where the lure would be but not a lure but then some of them have nothing at all just like a regular tongue so wow that's fascinating hang on one second greg i'm gonna okay commercial break commercial break for ads that i don't have yet <laughs> <laughs> we'll just put an ad for your shit your channel right here on that moment okay <laughs> <laughs> trying to get some sponsors for this podcast but it's a slow process when a, your mom is the only one that watches not your mom my mom mom's the one that watches the show all right uh where were we sir before my daughter interrupted us we were talking about hybrids um what's a species of turtle that you've never got a chance to work with that you would love to work with or a home 
Um, maybe uh, North American wood turtles yeah. or um, Asian big headed turtles. One of those two. Both of them like cold streams. So yeah, for sure. You um, don't you have a friend? Uh, I can't remember the guy's name. He's got a channel, I believe, too. Um, he's he breeds them or he raises them up in the northeast coast. The uh, the wood turtles. Yeah. I, yeah. I, that up? He has spotted, I believe, too. Yeah, I think uh, Chris Leone, uh, Garden State tortoise. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Yep. Yeah, yeah, he sorry, has. Sorry, dude, Chris, I forgot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he's got a. We've got wood turtles, Blanding's turtles, spotted turtles. I mean, really, I mean, a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, he's even got some big alligator snappers. And then he's also got uh, Western Herman's tortoises, which are these really cool little compact tortoises that make perfect pets. Yeah. Those are um, awesome. Yeah. He's, and he's got like a YouTube channel with all that stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. In his defense, he has no idea who I am. So it's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about collecting species, too. I know you and I are both fans of them, of all turtles. We would love to have them all, but we have to have a balance because you can only take care of so much stuff. What's your, um, what can you tell people that are kind of young in the game that want to start collecting species, but they want to kind of do the whole Pokemon mindset of collect them all? Uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, you don't, you don't need and you don't have to collect them all. I always tell people, like, no one needs pet turtles. Like, yeah. you don't need them it's you want them right. you know so it's like if you're going to take care of them it's your job to give them the best life you possibly can and the more you take on the more you risk not being able to give each one the best life that you can and um you know i i went through a period of time in my life where at one point i i wanted to have everything and i wanted to be like a breeder and sell them and all that stuff yeah. and i i kind of realized over the the time when I was doing that, that that wasn't even about like the turtles that was about myself and I was being really selfish. And it was about like kind of having a, a bit of an ego with it, you know? And I was like, well, this isn't, this is only serving myself. This isn't really anything positive. And that was when I kind of let, I let that whole thing go. I don't, I don't have any desire to be a turtle breeder or well-known for selling turtles. And, um, I kind of decided that education is, is kind of my route. And, um, I enjoy that a lot more. So a lot of the turtles that I have um, are animals that need homes. So if somebody wants to get into turtles and tortoises, man, there's so many of them that need homes and need somebody to take care of them. Start with something basic. There's no reason to go from zero to fly river turtle. And, um, you I know, like how you call the soft shell, the, um, the, the poor man's fly river. It's oh yeah. Yeah. Florida soft shell is a poor man's fly river. <laughs> I, and I, I, that's why I, I didn't say, species i'd like to work with because i've got florida soft shells man for me like that's like a redneck fly river turtle right there yeah, i love that is, thing I have um eastern spiny that's my uh, yeah. fly river i got i got those as well and um i i love those and um and, and those are a species that is easy to they're easy to obtain but if you get females they're it's, it's easy for somebody to get in over their head if you get a female florida or you get a female spiny you're talking about a 20 to 22 inch shell and, and really, fast, really, too. really active needs clean water, needs sand. I mean, you're, you're checking all the boxes of stuff. That's a pain in the ass. And, um, you know, you really want to be able to, you want to be able to take care of it as best you can. And, um, so I, I always recommend people start with something basic, easy to obtain, start with a painted turtle, start with a musk turtle, um, find somebody else that has a collection and help out you know, help them out. You know, that, that makes a difference too. Um, yeah. You know, in Florida, they make everybody that works with crocodilians do a thousand hours of training to work with crocodilians, but they don't do that for turtles and turtles almost need it more, you know, yeah. uh, for different reasons. But I, I think that people, you know, should maybe have to work with help somebody else with another system first and, you know, kind of learn the ropes because too many people get turtles and they're into them until it either gets hard or they lose interest. And then the turtle gets, where's it going to go? They're going to let it go. They're going to post it on Craigslist or, you know, the, the turtle gets the, the, the short end of the stick every time. So, yeah, um, sure. 
but if you if you get a, a good hang of it and you get on a, like a, a really good thing like okay i've got these they're doing well i'm building this habitat i'm learning about this you know you I think if you are doing your research and really taking your time to learn about things, it's very natural. You'll figure out like, Oh, maybe, okay. Now I'd like to learn about tortoises. I've kept some aquatic turtles, you know, and then like they do the research, like, Oh, maybe I'll try a red foot tortoise or I'll try a Herman's tortoise and then work with that for a while. And then, you know, like I had sulcatas at my house before this and it had a moderate backyard, but I was renting, but I didn't get the adult sulcata until I moved where I moved now. And I have an over half acre backyard and it's, you know, there's a section of it that's just dedicated just for it to graze. Yeah. So, you know, you have to think about what's going to work for it. You know, with, with the alligator snapping turtles, you know, it's like I had to build them a pond. I had to have extra stock tanks in case they don't get along and, you know, and then with the musk turtles, it's like, well, they have to have certain habitats. You can't just throw other kinds of musk turtles in with, you know, like some stuff doesn't get along. And then with the map turtles, they need a different type of basking area than a slider. I mean, you, you can really like, it's like Morpheus in that chair. Like you can take the red pill and go down the rabbit hole of, of turtle nerd info and really start learning some stuff. And um, so if somebody's really into it, they'll do that. Yeah. Yeah. If anybody's watching, that's not, familiar with turtles that that much and wants to get into it more check out greg's channel because it is loaded with all kinds of good turtle information you have so many good videos too that break down like the different species and how you set up their habitat and i love all that stuff but my favorite is the herping videos i love when you go herping because whenever i can't go herping i watch your videos and i feel like i'm there it's like damn that looks like a cool place to go <laughs> no i mean I, dude i trust me this time of year i watch my herping videos i go yeah. back and i'm like okay let's start in may when it was good like earlier this year because you know i went out today to try and um get one for tomorrow and i did like it was just too cold like everything had gone below ground so i got nothing today but um you know i i think i enjoy the herping videos the most like as far as what i as far as making them and it's mm -hmm. funny because like they're the most basic. I mean, most of the time it's my phone, sometimes a GoPro or sometimes another camera. And, but it's, that's like where I'm happiest, you know, like that's me doing what I did when I was a kid. And, yeah. you know, sometimes I get to meet up with like friends that do it. And, and so I enjoy that. I like making the videos at my house for helping people out and educating and stuff like that. I try to, I try to go deep, but I also try to keep it palatable for somebody that's new. Mm -hmm. and, and I think sometimes that's a hard time, a hard balance to achieve is like, yeah, I can you do a good job with that though. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Cause it, it's hard, man. Cause I had, yeah. I remember when I was younger, I would, I would want to learn stuff. And then sometimes dudes would just want to jump down my throat with scientific names. I couldn't, yeah. you know, understand or pronounce. And, you yeah. know, they would, they would be very like, this is this, this is, you know, and whereas like, I, but that's like uninviting. That doesn't make you feel like exactly. welcome. Yeah. And so like, I want to make people feel welcome, but I also want people to feel like they're getting more than they would from maybe a, a more entry level channel or source. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, a great point. Um, that's a, one of my pet peeves for sure. in the hobby is people that they want to drown you with the scientific names and try to outdo you with knowledge. And it's like that that's cool if you're with your buddies that do that too and y'all kind of want to geek out together but for the common person yeah. that's slightly interested or just listening to you that you're going to lose them instantly that's just it's like speaking yeah. star trek languages to people it, it is and it's it's funny because i have friends and it's like when i when i go out with them sometimes it's all scientific names and i have to like kind of hit that switch in my head yeah and then once i do i'm used to it but then you know then i go back to talking to you know, somebody else and I have to remember go, okay, you know, so it's, it's like being bilingual to an extent, <laughs> which, is. which is kind of weird, but it's, um, and, and there's good reason for it because this, if you use the scientific names, the, the argument they always make is, you know, exactly what you're talking about. Right. But my argument has always been, dude, if it's just me and you, we both know what we're talking about. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So like that yeah. part is always a little goofy to me. Yeah, that's a good point. My buddy, that he's big in the scientific names, and I just kind of throw a stick at him or my snake hook whenever he goes on those tangents. I'm like, no, dude, we're not talking like that. We're yeah, and then you get enough only. of those. <laughs> yeah, you get enough of those guys together. Then they start critiquing pronunciation of scientific names. Yeah, then it just becomes a peacock contest of who's the bigger nerd and who reads more. So it's like, man, you're taking the fun out of it. Yeah. 
and that's that's a big deal with me. It's fun and it's a natural, fun hobby. It goes back to childhood. It's not something you want to turn into. A, who's the who's the better reader? Book. Yeah, yeah, that's never fun. Yeah. Um. What? What is the? Um, oh, lost my thought here. Oh yeah, you had a. You, I don't remember what episode it was, but you talked about um, a gravid alligator snapping turtle that was retaining sperm and i had never knew about this i thought that was so interesting okay. so th they can actually retain sperm and how long do they do that for so uh most turtles can do that um oh, wow. and in fact a lot of other reptiles can do that and it's um an adaptation they've made over you know millions of years yeah. and the advantage to this is if something happens to their population and their population takes a big hit and they need to be able to repopulate with good genetics a female can retain sperm from a past mating. So she can hold on to sperm from five years ago, but she can also retain sperm from multiple males so that that clutch of eggs has genetic diversity within that clutch. So now yeah. that those offspring, once they grow up, they can also mate you know, amongst themselves and not have those negative effects of inbreeding because of the genetic diversity within that clutch of eggs from all that retained sperm from those wow. previous matings. That so incredible. that's really, really cool. Yeah. yeah. Can you and that's why, if like, women could do that, man. We'd have some trouble with our ex-girlfriends. <laughs> I, I think some of them try, but I, what's yeah. what's really cool is you can see it sometimes too. You can get a clutch of eggs, and you can see some of the turtles in there are just so different from each other, and they grow differently from each other. Like, Damn, that's so um, cool. they're not they're not all twins of each other, you know. So you'll get um, one turtle in a clutch that grows really really fast you'll get another one that wags behind then you'll get one that for whatever reason has all these kind of coloration and pattern and you know you just get all these different traits and it's yeah. it's really really awesome and it's i mean i feel like it's kind of like a jurassic park mother nature at its finest you know yeah. finding a way exactly that's what i was thinking nature finds a way wow that is so cool i've never known that what other cool facts can you share with the, my mom and myself um, I mean, one of my favorites to point out with, uh, <laughs> hello mom. Um, uh, one of my favorites to point out is, uh, I always like telling people, especially when they come over and I can show them in person is, um, that a lot of the aquatic turtles can actually take in oxygen through their skin, um, through the lining of their throat, through their cloaca. I always think that's a really neat thing. Um, a lot of people have this idea that because reptiles are quote cold blooded, that they can't handle, you know, like what we're going through right now. So freezing temperatures, I can go outside and I've got turtles underneath the ice and they're doing just fine. And they'll just sit there underneath the ice, taking in very, very minute amounts of oxygen because they've slowed their heart rate down to maybe a beat or two a minute to where they they don't have that high demand for it. So I always think that's really neat. And I, like, that's a really cool adaptation. Um, another one being is that, Turtles have an amazing sense of direction. I mean, there's multiple published studies of turtles being caught and released and they find their way back, you know, kilometers, miles, whatever, all the way back to where they were captured. Um, wow. They have an amazing, you know, home range instinct. Females will always come back and nest in the same place every year. Um, it's it's pretty that neat. Either. That's really cool. Damn, that's awesome. You're making me like turtles even more, man. <laughs> turtle tattoo. <laughs> Do you have a turtle tattoo? I don't. I actually, um, I've always talked about it. I always wanted to get one, but, um, I, uh, just haven't had, haven't had the right artist. I haven't had the right piece to like get hyped on. Um, yeah. I, I do a lot of photography and I, I have like a few photos I've shot of some alligator snappers and some other stuff where if, yeah. if the right person could do it and not make it look goofy, then I would be down. Yeah, that would be the absolute worst, man. You got a, a turtle one, and it's like all jacked up looking. Is this your picture? Yeah. I believe it is, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. That's a cell phone picture of one that I caught in Mississippi. I was snorkeling. Yeah, I freaking love that picture, man. I don't know what it is about this picture, but it's like one of my favorite alligator snapper pictures. I was uh, really – I I had had that picture in my head before I even got to Mississippi. Really? I remember when I talked to my buddy Grover, I had seen so many of his pictures of like that stream – and I had it in my head that when I got there, I was going to get an alligator snapper. And I mean, it was October and it was, it, it was cold overnight. It was in the low fifties. Like all the conditions were wrong to be able to find something. But in the first eight to 10 minutes on the water, I snorkeled that, that turtle up. It was like the first thing I did. I got down there and I was like, it's perfect. I'm going to find one. 
I went across the stream, found the biggest log jam, swam right to the bottom and Grover was right next to me. I was like, dude, there's one right here. And I'm bummed because it was one of my first trips with my GoPro and I meant to bring the GoPro with me. But I remember I saw the log jam and I was so excited to try and find an alligator snapper. I was like, this thing's a pain in the butt. I just threw it over my shoulder and left it there. Oh, and I was like, and so I totally forgot to film finding it and pulling it up. And, yeah. um, but it, I mean, it ended up being just a perfect example of a, you know, nice Western alligator snapper. And then I was just like, dude, everything, met, everything just made sense. It was in the spot I wanted and it was the sand. And, yeah. And, the, and the, yeah, and that stream is, is amazing. It's full of map turtles, snappers, musks. I mean, it's, it's a really cool place. Yeah, man. So that's a cell phone picture. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. I took that with my iPhone um, and then edit with uh, Lightroom. Wow. That's incredible. I, um, that's one I would definitely frame and put on my wall. I love, I love that picture so much. It just gets me so excited about being out there and what you just said, you saw it under a log jam type thing, man. That's kid in the yeah. candy store. Yeah. It was one of those where I was just like, it, there was a couple things about that trip where everything like, everything worked out and it seemed like it shouldn't have uh -huh. and it just like I, I was i was telling a friend about it one time i was like sometimes it seems like if you just go with the flow and let things happen and just follow examples it, it just seems like things kind of go your way it, it's really weird yeah that's really cool did i have this one on earlier this is one of your pictures i believe too from your um oh, okay one of your stomping that's, grounds yeah that's um a that's over near yeah, that's that's over near um, the south side of Atlanta, believe it or not. But that that stream has all kinds of turtles in it, and it's yeah, in a pretty urban area. It looks like it. When I saw it, I was like, man, that's if you could just put in a picture like what gets me excited is that right there. Just yeah. if I walked up on that, I'd be happy as can be for the next. It's cool. Hours. There's it's 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 um, upper Flint River drainage, and it, but I mean, there's cotton mouths, um, alligator snappers, common snappers, soft shells, musk turtles, mud snakes, um, rogue uh, American alligators occasionally find their way up that. Uh, it's it's a really neat drainage, and um, just all those little you know creeks and streams have like a lot of stuff in them. Yeah, it looks like a, a giant playground. Um, so what are you doing? when it's non herping season, man, what do you, what's your advice for other herpers too, that are stuck? Not I mean, able to flip. It, it's my, it, for me, it's herping season all year round. It's just a matter of how you're going to adapt to it. So right now, I mean, it's, it's in the twenties everywhere overnight right now. So this week is kind of, kind of been like a big pause button unless you want to drive down to South Florida. And I did that like a week ago. So I'm, I'm going to give it a break for a little while, but, um, so normally right now I would shift to um, looking for salamanders. So salamander breeding season is going on right now. So if it's a, a rainy night and it's 50, 60 degrees, you're going to find tiger salamanders, spotted, marbled crossing the road. And so I'll, I'll cruise the roads looking for those. If it's a decently warm day during the day down here, turtles will come out on like a decent winter day. Um, striped neck musk turtles are active year round. I just, I try not to beat that horse to death because I know I can go get them every time. I just don't want to like keep doing the same video every week. Yeah. You are the and man then, when it comes to finding musk turtles too, man. You can, you find so many of them. <laughs> yeah. It, well, once you know what they like and yeah. you realize like how uh, abundant they can be, it, it's, it's just so fun because it can be, sometimes it's hard to find one, but then sometimes it's like, how many can I find? And then that, yeah. that gets even more fun. Yeah, they're they have such cool personalities. They're they're one of my favorites too. I have uh, two Razorbacks and a, a giant Mexican musk. That's my, okay. My, my musk turtle collection. Dude, I, um, those those are like some of the best you can have right there. Razorbacks and Trifurcatus are like some of my favorites. Yeah, I love them, man. They're so adorable. My kids get a kick out of watching them too. I wanted them to grow up with turtles around too because I just got back into turtles probably this last year um a year or two and i wanted them to have that around because i always had it around when i was a kid we would always go find stuff and put them in aquariums or little cheap pools and stuff like that but it's such a cool thing to grow up around yeah it really is it's i like mean it's dog. um you have to have a dog around and too. and as time goes by i mean there's only going to be unfortunately there's only going to be less and less you know turtles around and um i mean hopefully things change but yeah, I, I think that it's it's good for kids to grow up around animals, you know, like yeah, regardless sure. of what they are. I think um, 
it's easy for kids to grow up around like iPads and devices and kind of get pulled into that world and forget about everything else that actually exists in the world. And so I think growing up around animals and being outside, like keeps kids grounded. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. When we take our kids away from the electronics and go hiking or do anything outdoors, there's like a, a good hour to two hours of just uh, weaning from being plugged into electronics and like that addiction that it is. And then back to, Oh, this is actually fun. And then they forget about the other shit and they're having a good time. But, yeah. Uh, it's definitely a drug, man. Kids are all addicted to electronics. So uh, Westerns, let's go back to Westerns real quick. Um, what's your favorite Westerns? Give me some examples. Um, I would say uh, Fistful of Dollars, uh, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, um, Once Upon a Time in the West, um, and then uh, I actually like Pale Rider, Unforgiven. Um, Mostly Eastwood, huh? Yeah, I like all the Eastwood stuff. But then I also like, um, well, I said Once Upon a Time in the West. I like that one a lot. So pretty much any Sergio Leone I like. And then most of the Eastwood, most of the Eastwood ones I like. I like the one where they paint the town red. I, cannot, I just can't ever remember the, the name of that one. The one where he's like a ghost. So Yeah, shit. Um, it's not Outlaw Josie Wells. Uh, that, dude, that's a good one right there, too. Yeah, that's, that one's not a... It's not a Sergio Leone, but it's a really good one. Yeah, damn, I can't think of it either. What about um, uh, modern ones? Any good ones that you've seen in the last 15 years or so? I liked um, No Country for Old Men. I like that one a lot, yeah, even though it's like kind of weird and quirky. Um, and then uh, I'm trying to remember, are, are there any recent westerns? It's I got it's hard to read. For you. Um, I just finished a series on Netflix that was surprisingly really done well. Uh, it's called Godless. It's, oh, uh, I watched Godless. Yes. You did see yes. it? Okay. Yeah, I did watch that. Yeah. I was very impressed with that one. That was good. It's like seven episodes. Yep. Um, well, I just seen another one that wasn't bad either. Um, I know True Grit, the remake of True Grit was pretty good. Um, did you I see saw that, that in the theater. Yeah. yeah. Oh, damn. There's another one too. Um, there, I, I did like one that my brother didn't like, so I don't, it might be a hit and miss. Uh, it's called Slow West. I think that's still on Netflix. Um, oh, that's the one. Um, what's his name's in it? The guy from like X Men. Yeah. The Michael Irish Fassbender. guy. Yeah. yeah. Damn, you've seen them all, man. I don't have any. That's what I'm saying. Like, man, you. if it's westerns, like I'll, I'll watch them. It, yeah. It's, it's tough though because it's like sometimes you get those really good, like juicy, good westerns, and then sometimes you get them. And they either come across like they're trying too hard to be something yeah. from the past, or they're just like, they're so boring. Yeah, like boring. I used to corny and I, just off. I used to like that one. Um, what's the one where they're building the railroad. There's like a TV show. It's on Netflix. Hell on oh, wheels. Yeah. I like, I like uh, the first recommended that to me. I like the first couple seasons that they're really good. The guy that's a villain is just amazing. And then it's kind of like when you watch like Dexter, uh -huh. like the further you get in the episodes in that show, it kind of tapers out where you're like kind of losing interest a little bit, but hell on wheels. Those first couple seasons are really good. Okay. I'm gonna give that a try. My uh, father-in-law was just here for Thanksgiving and you recommended that one to me. Uh, Dexter should have stopped after season four. Uh, when I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think most sane people agree with that. Yeah, man, it's it was such a solid show, and then it just went to hell. It just started going to hell. Well, they're bringing it back. Yeah, I'm hoping they come back strong with it, and they kind of just, like, forget about the last five seasons. Yeah, they go, we were just kidding. Like, it was a dream. You know, they yeah, do that old trick up. or something. <laughs> yeah. Reed is freshly dead, and it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Pick up right where it left off. Yeah, that, that ended so bad, man. Those last seasons, he was becoming like a damn superhero. It just made no sense, all the stuff he was getting away with. And Yeah. Tom, Tom Hanks' son was on top of a roof with his uh, – with the kid. I can't remember who the kid was, but he supposedly got him down when the place was surrounded by cops and he got his body out of there. And I was, I was like, dude, what are y'all doing? This is so poor. Yeah. Person. Dark Defender needs a cape now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I loved that show so much when it was the first few seasons. All right, man. Well, that's all I got for you. You uh, you want to talk about some bizarre stuff you found on YouTube, maybe? Hmm? Hmm? Um, yeah, like I, 
like most people, man, I get on YouTube and I'd search around and one of them is, uh, I think the channel is just called WT WTF bra. And they just do like, write that down. they just do like rap videos and they use like Kenneth Copeland and they use <laughs> like, it's, it's one of those where they just basically take like audio and they make it in the rap song, but they're, they're so good. And they're, they get stuck in your head and you're like, man, I, I kind of want that single and like want to drive around <laughs> listening to Kenneth Copeland say COVID-19. Yeah. You sent me the Kenneth Cop Copeland one, man. That is, that is obnoxiously catchy. It's, it's really catchy. And then they started just putting him in all of them. So like all the new, all the newest ones, they call him Lil KC. <laughs> like Lil KC. Creep, man. Jesus. Yeah. I remember when I was a kid, that guy was was weird back in the day. Oh, you remember him? I, I just just dude. He's been around since the year. '80s. Really? Yeah, he's been around since the '80s. Back in the way back in the day, another buddy was. We were talking about this. Is that like he came out really hard against like heavy metal and it was like the devil's music and all that stuff. And he would, Ironic you know, when he looks like the devil. <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's it's funny. Like, yeah, there's like definitely a. a there's definitely irony in the world when, you know, you want to call stuff the devil and then you end up looking like the most like satanic person. <laughs> Dude, I would never, I would not be surprised at all if he just grabbed his face, pulled it off and it was like a demon right there. Like, all right, that's, that's what I expected. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I blow you away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's um, yep. a freak. I didn't realize he's been around that long, man. That's interesting dude the, all those guys man those guys never let go those guys like got their little claws in in like the 80s and like they're all like there was the guy that um there's like videos on you there's another funny one is is search farting preacher there's the guy and he would like um he would do his sermon and in the middle of it he would do like tongues he'd be like I'm blah, 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 you know but yeah. then he would also had these really weird mannerisms. And so somebody edited it together. I mean, this is like, they did this like 12 years ago. They just put fart sounds in there. So he's like this preacher and he'll like do something he'll like, blah, 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 and he'll stop and he'll be like, and it'll just be like a long <laughs> fart. It's, I like, I remember I found that and I was just dying laughing, you know, and being a guy, I mean, farts are the funniest thing in the world. So yeah, for sure. Yeah, man. Um, those preachers that are like that, I think they're the, they're supposed to be these good leader type people. I think they're some of the worst people on this planet. They, they you're pushing something that's supposed to be positive and uh, it's a good energy stuff, but you obviously are fraud and you're just like a damn car yeah. salesman trying to rip and, people off yeah. your money. And unfortunately, I, I ran into that um, in the mid 2000s. I was doing television stuff and I remember we got this job where it was like every Tuesday we would film a, basically a Sunday morning church show. So Sunday morning they would air it and it was like a Sunday morning Bible study. So we would film it on Tuesday nights. And I remember the, the preacher guy was like, he was cool, but he was also kind of like a smooth operator kind of guy. I remember I just got like a weird kind of vibe off of him. And most of his congregation were like elderly and they would just, that basket would go around two or three times while we were filming and he would make sure that people donated also before they went out the door. And meanwhile, they're all getting in their, you know, middle-class, lower middle-class car to go home. And he's mm -hmm. getting in like a Lexus on like giant rims with a system and, and, uh, it's God's and, and then at the same time, yeah. And then at the same time, like, stiffing us on our paychecks for filming his TV show. And I just remember, I was like, this is so, like hypocritical and yeah. this guy is just so not you know like they they say practice what you preach and this guy was literally not practicing what he was preaching to them and i remember yeah. like it just it left a, a really bad taste in my mouth and that thing i mean predictably that whole thing fell apart and um you know thankfully it did because i, I wasn't happy there doing that yeah yeah my dad always told us that um Anybody who's quick to tell you how great they are, that's the ones you want to watch. That's the ones you got to be careful for. <laughs> and yeah. It's, it's, but those kind of people are just up on the stage telling you how great they are and what they're doing for the world. They're, they're usually the shadiest people out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's true, man. I mean, there's, um, I mean, you can, you, whether it's, yeah, whether it's pertaining to religion or whatever, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. you can take that advice through anything. Yeah. And yeah, my dad gives good advice. Hopefully he's watching too. Hi, Pops. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> so what turtles do you have in the room with you right now? 
Um, so to the tank to my right, there is a small alligator snapping turtle. And then to my left is a Mata Mata turtle. And then because it's cold, I have um, a, a baby redfoot tortoise and a baby leopard tortoise somebody just gave me yesterday. Nice. So like I said, because it's been so cold, I kind of have some stuff kind of huddled up. Yeah. So like this is this is my office. This is where I do work and edit photos and videos and all that stuff. And normally I just have like the one or two tanks going, but because it's cold, I I have like kind of some extra stuff in here and I'm like, oh, well, you know, I'm, my wife isn't really stoked on it, but I had to like, well, some of the stuff has to spill up into my office to make sure there's room for everybody. <laughs> yeah, I can relate, man. My house is the same way right now. I brought a lot of stuff in. Yeah. All right, dude. I appreciate you coming on my show. Uh, where can my mom find you and support you? So Greg's Turtle Haven, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, just Greg's Turtle Haven. And uh, anything you want to know about turtles, if you want to watch me find wild turtles, um, that's where it's at. Yep. Awesome, man. Someday I need to come out there and come on a herping trip with you, man. Yeah, um, just let me know. Jimmy Riffle wants to do a trip too. So I'm supposed to go. We talked about going to uh, New Mexico. And mm -hmm. somewhere else, I forgot. Maybe in Florida too. But yeah, we should all get a squad together and go do a big yeah, trip. Yeah, I like I like that guy. I watch his channel. Yeah, he's a good dude, man. I really liked him. He was like instant. This guy's a, lot, a long, a lifelong friend now. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, he's a good guy. All right, brother. Appreciate you coming on. Have a good one. You too, man. Take care.